Now, uh, let's get some our daily coverage of the Olympics for our special session with our Ita Hill for the, all the latest news and results from Sochi. Good afternoon to you, Teo. Good afternoon. So, uh, it's, it was day 10 of the medal events yesterday at the Sochi Games, and uh, they are waking up to day 11 of medal events. What were the results yesterday? Well, I think the big news that came to a conclusion yesterday was the women's national curling team. They went up against the number two ranked team in the world, the ladies of Team Canada, which resulted in a loss, unfortunately. But this being their first birth at the Olympics, I think they did a wonderful job uh, winning over uh, the host country, Russia, Japan, the United States, and they placed eighth out of the ten teams that, result, uh, that competed in the event. Right. I mean, uh, you know, they, uh, these five uh, female athletes, they put uh, Korea on the curling map in the Olympics. This was their first Olympics ever, and which is uh, more, much more meaningful than the actual results. That's right, because what it did for the sport here in Korea, it put a spotlight on the sport and the ladies, of course. Uh, it was making headlines and news all the, uh, throughout, throughout the whole Sochi Olympics. And uh, it kind of, kind of raises awareness for the sport. And uh, before, uh, you know, the idols on ice uh, really performed at the Olympics. This was a relatively unknown sport, curling. What is it? You use a broom and a stone on the ice. So it's raised a lot of awareness and uh, claimed a lot more interest in Korea for the sport. Right, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, see this sport take a giant leap forward in four years when we here in Korea, Pyeongchang, host the Winter Games in 2018. Now moving on to a two-person bobsled event. That's another, uh, another event that Koreans are, weren't fully aware of until the Olympic Games this time. That's right. This is, one, this is the first time that the uh, Korean team participated in the two-person bobsleigh event. Korea had two teams participating in the competition with the first team, Team Korea number one of uh, Won Yoon Jung and So Young Woo, placing 18th overall. This is the best that uh, Team Korea has placed in any of the bobsledding events, and that's including the four-person event as well. Right. I mean, uh, congratulations, a job well done to uh, the athletes, Korean athletes in that uh, the sled. I'm, I'm still not very familiar with that <laughs> event. And um, to me, it looks like an amusement park, but I'm sure it's, it's much, much more than that. Now, uh, we creep ever closer to the start of the women's figure skating event. Um, of course, that is one of the highlights of the Winter Olympics. And I mean, you have a breakdown of the two uh, biggest uh, stories of the competition, right? That's right. Now, uh, the big, one of the focal points of the Winter Olympics is always the women's figure skating competition. And of course, we have our figure skating queen, Kim Yeon Ah, performing and the heavy pay favorite to repeat her gold performance once again here at the Sochi Winter Olympics. Now, coming into these Olympics, uh, her longtime rival of Mao Asada was the uh, second favorite, I guess, for the silver and even the gold. But with the emergence of 15 year old Yulia Litnitskaya of Russia, uh, she's having a sensational Olympics, and she's being called a, the Russian sweetheart. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, stories being told about the, the, the strengths of the two, uh, uh, Kim and, of course, Litmanskaya. I mean, um, you know, I would have to say that uh, it would be a little bit hard to uh, call them rivals or make comparisons between the two. As, you know, for Kim yeon this is her last and final Olympics as, uh, as she end her career as an um, athlete. Uh, figure skater. For Litniskaya, this is her first ever Olympics. She's just starting uh, with her career, so I, I think there's more of a contrast between the two than comparisons, but the media have been putting a lot of focus on uh, in comparing the two. That's right. Now, there's been stories being set up about the, the skill of the two, uh, Litniskaya and Kim, but I think what a lot of uh, media outlets have failed to kind of point out is the vast difference in experience between the two, because uh, two Olympics compared to one, being in uh, the, the competitions for uh, X amount of years that Kim has been and dominating really for all those years. And the relatively new, uh, I guess, budding star that Litnitskaya currently is. But taking a look at Kim's uh, strongest skill, her jumps, I mean, these are uh, what experts call a textbook jump. Um, there are four things that really pop out. And the first thing is the speed going into jumps. Now, most skaters tend to slow down as they go into their jumps just for safety and security and to make sure that they maintain form. But 
Himyeon intends to maintain her speed throughout her jump, which is amazing. Now, uh, that is something that Lipniskaya also does. She slows down, she twists her skates uh, going into the jump, uh, which is uh, kind of dangerous on her ankles as well. And I guess that also leads to the second point, which is the height of her jumps. Now, because she's going so fast into her jumps, she gets more height into her jumps. Now, uh, with Lipniskaya, she tends to get a little bit lower in the air compared to Kimina, of course, and um, a lot of times she seems to just be hovering above the ice, whereas Kimina seems to just be uh, up in the air, getting, grabbing the air, and just sailing through the air itself. Uh, yes. Yeah, and um, you know, a lot of uh, the experts have in previous years compared uh, Kimina's jumps to um, to the male athletes' jumps. I mean, the the power going into the speed, the height, the distance which she travels uh, in air, that's just uh, remarkable. However, Lipniskaya's jumps uh, seem um, executed in tight as well. That's right. Now, that's because of the rotation of her spin while she's in the air. Although she doesn't go uh, into the jumps with the same speed or get the same height, she does maintain really, really, really good form, just like Kim Yuna does, which uh, forms a tighter, quicker spin uh, during the rotation of the jump. Right. Um, another thing about, I think, uh, Liniskaya is um, that her spins are very, very, uh, you know, well executed. And she used to be a gymnast, so I think that uh, has, you know, that makes her uh, flexibility more, I suppose, smooth than Kim Yuna. Well, that's one of the big things. Now, the strength of Kim Yuna being her jumps, the strength of Lipniskaya is really her spins and her flexibility. And when you look at Lipniskaya's spins, she spins very quickly. She has a very good center of gravity, and her flexibility definitely helps as uh, compared to Kim Yuna, who had a back injury a, a couple of years ago. So she really tends to stay away from the complex spins. Well, uh, we'll have to wait and see um, how the two perform. And it's, um, you know, I'm sure they have practiced a lot, you know, tried their physical limits and whatnot. But I think uh, on the day of the competition, it's more of, you know, how, how mentally strong you are. And we'll have to wait and see how that plays out, uh, which will be the midnight on the 20th here in Korea. That's right. All right. Thank you, Teho, for that. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right.